I got a suit. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Right hand drive Ron here. Glad to see you, glad you could make it. So today's assignment is gonna be removal and installation of the carburetor on my 91 Honda Acti. I'm also going to replace the two very common solenoids that are in the carburetor that can sometimes cause um, issues with starting, which is exactly what I've had the last couple months. Um, cold weather, hot weather, sometimes when the vehicle's warm, even sometimes when it's cold on a cold startup, it's having a lot of difficulty starting, having to give it a little gas and things like that. Things that I feel like, based on other trucks I've had, you shouldn't have to do. So, figured it's a good time to go through the carburetor. We'll do a clean, we'll put in a new OEM kit, we'll put in the two very common solenoids that go bad on these little trucks. And um, general shenanigans with Ron, you know how I do. So, if you notice, I got my new digs on. Shout out to all things JDM with a Z. That's them. Stay tuned guys, let's get to it. Like always, I like to start out the video with a little bit of uh, what I like to call scope of the project. Here on the left, check the part number in case you need it. This is basically your soft part um, O-ring kit, gasket kit for your Acti carburetor. Comes as an assembly there. There's your part number. <clears throat> Two guys here are going to be your solenoids, part number there, part number there, just to show you what they look like. This guy right here, so it's got a single kind of a butt connector there, and this guy here, which also comes with an O-ring in your package. So if you do decide to purchase this OEM, I don't know that there's aftermarket. So OEM may be the only option. It's the only way I'd like to handle it uh, for the little truck. There's your O-ring. It will be going there once we, um, we install this in the carburetor. So there's the scope of this mission and vision. Let's get this carburetor taken off and cleaned up so we can install these new parts. So to start things off, you can see I've got the engine cover removed, exposing the carburetor, uh, the engine. I've also got what I plan to attack this job with. I ensure you the scope will grow with things that are needed to do this, just based off all the um, findings and crevices of this little engine. But anyway, starting off with some general pliers, needle nose, um, what I refer to as regular long extension there. We've got 10s, 12s, 14s, wrenches, ratchet wrenches, bless ratchet wrenches, and um, of course an assortment of screwdrivers there. So if you're trying to scope this job for what tools you need, let's start there. If I end up adding anything, I'll update as we go. So to kick things off, we're gonna need to remove the carburetor cover here. You've got three Phillips head uh, screws, one back here, one here, and one here that you'll need to remove. Also, before you can remove that top plastic cover, you're going to need to remove this hose here and get it out of the way of the cover, along with this one here, uh, this vacuum hose here, and this vacuum hose here. One thing to be careful with with any of these vacuum hoses is a lot of times they are connected to plastic uh, nipples within here that are 30 years old. So as you're working these off, be very delicate with them. Um, just kind of give them a little twist as you're pulling and um, extract those off there, just one at a time very gently. You may as well get these off before you um, start removing those screws up top. This one's metal, it's a good deal. Relatively easy there. <clears throat> and this guy in here has given me trouble in the past because the nipple is very deep behind the upper cover. So just being very gentle with that and trying not to tear the hose as well. Otherwise you get into vacuum leaks and um, idle surging issues and things like that. So I'm gonna go through and get these off, remove these screws and we'll see what's underneath. Okay, we've got the three vacuum hoses that are kind of restraining our cover on off. I've removed the three screws to this point. One thing you wanna do before you start this job and throughout, as we go through and remove vacuum hoses, take a picture. We have cell phones this day. We've got cameras in our pockets. Let's make this job easier to go back together. Take pictures as you go so that you know where all these vacuum lines go back through. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and pull this cover up and off. That's it. 
set it aside. <coughs> Carburetor's exposed at this point. You can see some of the nipples there that we pulled some of the vacuum hoses off. So the next thing up is let's go ahead and remove the throttle cable. You've got 12 millimeter uh, nuts right here. And if you don't wanna have to readjust your throttle uh, cable position, try to keep this one my fingers on here uh, stationary. Break the other one loose here. And only remove the one that's closest to the butterfly of the throttle body. What that allows you to do is take that all the way back past the removal point. You can pop your cable out, pull this back and out. You can see there you've got the blank spot where it's unthreaded. If you leave this in the same spot, you always go back to the same place you found it there. So um, pull your cable up. and out. We'll just kind of set this aside and get it out of the way. Let's kind of gaze around the area here and see what we're going to be up against. Looks like we're going to have to remove these two hoses. It looks like a um, kind of an old school fast idle thermo valve, so likely to have coolant in those two. Looks like we've got some vacuum lines down here. Obviously we've got our fuel supply here coming in. And there's also some vacuum lines back in here that goes towards the actual intake track there. We'll have to remove those, um, possibly this guy right here. So just to kind of show everybody what's in here as I go through this, it may not be very visible. Um, just wanted to give you an indication of things we will be removing. fingers here I'm gonna go straight down there's also uh, what appears to be another breather tube uh, clamp and hose down there I'm just gonna remove that <clears throat> likely with uh, what I've referred to as the regular pliers scoot that off there so to show you there that was the other hose I was just after uh, right there came off that uh, nipple right there. So we've got our intake track pushed back out of the way. We'll go after this fuel hose next. And then what appears to be, those are likely coolant lines. All right, folks, as expected, those were coolant lines right there. And what I've tried to do is get them to a high point. That way we're not gonna get any excessive drainage of the coolant system there. This must be some sort of old school fast idle thermo valve. This is found on uh, the B series, D series engines there through the mid nineties. <clears throat> Got the fuel line off now. We are going to continue removing uh, some vacuum hoses here until we get to the point where we're breaking the two 12 millimeter nuts off. Um, you've got one there and you've got one deep down in there where my finger's pointing. That's really the only two things that's holding this carburetor on. Um, aside from everything around it that's stuck to it, those are kind of your two mounting points there. All right, so I'm coming to you live from underneath the Acti, and no, it is not on the lift, so Ron is on his back. Repeat, Ron is on his back, man down. So I have since removed the two 12 millimeter nuts to pull the carburetor off of the uh, engine there. However, there's just not enough room with the intake track there to really scoot it off the two studs uh, to clear the carburetor to remove. So I'm gonna go in and take off this 10 millimeter um, clamp right here. And I'm gonna remove um, this vacuum hose here, which is attached to the intake track, and just try to pull the intake track off. Uh, that way we've, we've got enough space to really pull the carburetor back towards the rear of the truck and slide it up and off those two uh, studs. All right, I've removed that intake track down by the actual breather box. Um, there's actually three 10 millimeter bolts that hold that breather box, which contains your air, air filter, to the underside of the truck. I did back those three bolts out, allowing the air box with the intake track to scoot back enough to allow me to pull the carburetor off of the intake manifold here. So at that point, we're going to do that. And we're going to see what all is connected on the underside of this carburetor because I assure you, we're gonna have electric, electrical connectors for the solenoids, 
And we're also gonna have some vacuum lines um, on, on the underside of the carburetor there. So we're gonna very meticulously unhook and route out as we pull this out. And you've got some stuff stuck to the actual plastic cover here. Some of your vacuum lines, these two guys here are together. They're on the bottom portion of that plastic cover. You can see there where those were attached. Honda does a good job of finding a place to uh, put everything. Um, and you better hope you do a, just as good a job remembering where to put it back. So that's why we're gonna take pictures, which I've done throughout this job. Which you guys don't see because I'm using my camera to do this filming. Okay, all right, I'm gonna pause here for station identification and take a picture of the underside of this um, plastic box here so I know where to put all these vacuum lines when we go back together with it. All right, so like any good job, I like to try to take the path of uh, least resistance. However, um, you got a lot of hoses here. So take a look at this red hose here. This actually goes back to a little fitting right here. You can see my fingers out there. You're gonna need to pull that up out of the intake tract. It's got a little placeholder there, uh, or a hose keeper, not a placeholder. Pop that loose first. Also, when I start looking at some of these brittle tees and whatnot, I wanna stay away from things that um, look like they would break and need to be replaced. So <clears throat> I'm looking at this little Y here, which is gonna need to come off. I'll take that Y off there. Um, also looking at these two hoses here, my fingers are at here. I'll take those off the metal um, piping there because they're again, low probability of uh, breaking. So once I get these two hoses off, break this T connection here, we'll roll this carburetor down. And over here on this side, these two connectors here are what go to your solenoids that we're actually going to be replacing. So we'll knock those two loose, those two hoses, that one T, extract our carburetor at that point, bring your little flange uh, out here. This is going to have O-rings in it. Let's take care of those. I'm not sure if the kit has those or not. I would hope it does, um, but be sure not to lose that. All right, folks, we have extracted the carburetor. So let's take this thing over here to the bench and tear it down. All right, so here we are back on the workbench. Um, I've got me a fluid collection container there for whatever wants to come out of here. So far we've seen gas and uh, antifreeze. So um, as I was showing you guys, this is that spacer that came off of the engine. Um, taking a look at the carburetor rebuild kit, it does not come with these O-rings. So take care of those O-rings, don't lose them if you plan on reusing them. Like I stated, side profile of these, they still got um, a raised round surface, so I have uh, full confidence that this will reseal. Um, taking off this bottom cover now, I've already taken my picture here to see where all the hoses are routed. So we'll just kind of start popping these hoses out of their hose holder locations here. Um, from there, you've got two eight millimeter bolts. So we'll remove those eight millimeter bolts there to expose uh, the bottom portion of the carburetor should give us access to the carburetor bowl and all the internals there we'd like to go through and clean um, also give us the ability to replace those two solenoids which are really the main uh, mission and vision of today's assignment but we'll go ahead and give the carburetor a clean while we're at it so there's those two guys we'll set those aside there to break these hoses up here so we can slip this cover off we have to use these gloves sparingly. Ron can't afford uh, latex gloves these days. The rent is too high. All right, so here's our detailed view of what the underside of the carburetor looks like. Basically looking straight down at the bowl. Um, we've got Phillips head there, one here, and on this back side to pull that carburetor bowl off. You see the various vacuum lines there. There's the underside of the box. Here's our two solenoids. That we're going to replace. Uh, looking at one of them, it looks relatively new. But since we're here, we're gonna go ahead and replace it anyway. 
Uh, the other one doesn't look as new, so maybe he's the culprit for this. Um, yeah, these things are purchased, so they're going on. Start tearing this thing down, and then we'll do some uh, carburetor cleaner, see if we can clean any of the internal passages or whatnot. I bought a sweet little uh, $9 carburetor kit from Amazon that I'm just itching to use to try to uh, flush out some of those passages if there's any gumming or nastiness in there. So before we go any further, I kind of wanted to take a look and see what it's going to take to get these two solenoids out. Um, it looks like we're going to have to bust this. It appears to be a 12 millimeter bolt loose. Also going to have to pull these two cotter pins out of this linkage here and remove that. <clears throat> that will allow us to get to one of the Phillips head screws that's underneath this linkage. These are little vacuum diaphragm um, actuators here. So you want to be really careful. I'm sure these diaphragms are, you know, 30 years old. You don't want to tear those. Um, and you can see here, it doesn't take much uh, to wiggle these guys here. So we're going to carefully remove these pins, remove this 12 millimeter here, pull this up out of the way, do the same for the next one, and extract these solenoids out. To get to the solenoid here, we're going to have to remove the actual fuel hose, just the clamp there. That one should be the less of the two evils. Um, but yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay, just to update everyone, um, as you probably couldn't see this in time lapse, but I was able to remove those two little cotter pins. I was able to remove this, um, it was actually an 11 millimeter nut, so I'm curious if maybe they lost the original 10 or 12, replaced it with 11. That's just odd for uh, working on Hondas. So, nonetheless, what you want to do also to break this loose is you can take a set of needle nose pliers or something uh, of the sorts and just kind of hold it against this post here. In this inner prong right here and you don't have to squeeze it because you don't want to put any pressure on the diaphragm but just use it to oppose the twisting force that you're going to put on this nut as you try to bust it loose um, that keeps the lever from actuating and putting excessive pressure on those diaphragms you can see how everything wiggles here so once that's off as i mentioned you can just pull this whole assembly off all right so now that we've got all of our linkages removed I should be able to get here and um, get this first solenoid out. A couple of eight millimeter bolts as well. Not to mention, it shows you guys how to do it as well. For those that may need this handy dandy magnet there. Okay, so solenoid's out at this point. Here's what it looks like, relatively new. There is a way to test these, you can apply 12 volts uh, to this and I believe ground the housing and basically check to make sure um, this thing pulls in it's just a electrical coil with the plunger in there make sure that pulls in and out all right so just because we got the solenoids out I'm going to go ahead and test them just to see if they actually function um, pretty much just 12 volts here and you actually just use the housing here to kind of ground that so I will take this little clamp here Stick that there. Got my handy dandy probe here. We'll stick that there. So we can see that that one's actually functional. Whether it's stroking is uh, far in or out as it should, that I don't know. But nonetheless, we've replaced it. Taking a look at the other one, which basically looks new. I fully expect this one to work as it should. There again, we'll ground on the housing. Just ground that there. So we're clamped on to the housing. Apply our 12 volts there. You can see the plunger's pulling in, so this one's functional as well. Hopefully, um, just the general cleaning of the carburetor is going to get the truck starting up like it should. So to check, both of these solenoids are good. But like I said, you guys now know how to swap those out in case yours are bad. Um, if you pull them out and get to this point, do a check and they work, you know it's on you to put those uh, back in or replace them. So 
that's how you functionally check those two solenoids. All right, so now let's get back to uh, taking the carburetor bowl off of this guy. And as I mentioned earlier, you got three Phillips head screws. All right, three bolts are out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this cautiously. Straight up. Flip it over. Looks relatively clean. A lot cleaner than I expected, actually. I do have the new gaskets um, in that gasket set for this, so obviously we'll be replacing that. <clears throat> then you just want to kind of check your float. Uh, you know, see how it's working. Um, seems to be very clean. I try to run only uh, ethanol-free gas in the truck. Um, I've got a local station that um, has 100% pure gas. Just since it's carbureted and you've got, you know, passages and things like that to get clogged up with any sort of um, gunk or things like that. Um, I'm going to go through and just carb clean all the orifices, all the jets, the main jets. Um, I may even try to knock this float out and get underneath it. Check the needle valve here. <clears throat> Once you pull this float out, um, you'll be able to pull that needle valve out. Sometimes you can get gunking there that causes it to hang open allowing more fuel than needs to be in the bowl of the carburetor and basically causes your float not to shut off tight, right? So we're upside down now looking at this, but if you could imagine gravity is gonna be pulling this towards the ground. Um, as your carburetor bowl fills up, this float, it's just that. It floats up with the level of the fuel until it shuts off. And when it shuts off, you've got a nice tight seal there uh, in your needle valve. So I'm gonna open this up and kind of inspect all that stuff. I wanna show you guys this. so. This right here is the pin that holds the bowl into the carburetor right here between these two posts. So you can kind of tap that little pin out. Should slide out relatively easy. This here is your float. And I'm gonna put my finger on here so I don't lose it. That right there is your little needle valve, okay? And it's kind of got a little rubber tip on it there. And that basically just goes down into this hole right here. And when this float reaches a certain level, it'll shut the uh, fuel supply off and it will allow the fuel supply to fill up the bowl as needed, all based off on basically buoyancy there for all of our uh, mechanical or uh, uh, fluid engineers there. We know about the uh, force of buoyancy there. Um, from here, I'm just going to kind of take the carb and go through it with some carburetor gunk cleaner. I've also got some compressed air. I'm going to shoot through all the orifices. This is going to make somewhat of a mess. I'm going to kind of remove it away from... Uh, my working area here, maybe go to the floor with this. And um, basically just shooting in the tiny offices, blowing out any air passage. All right, so at this point I've got um, everything cleaned out. I've put a lot of air, compressed air, through all the ports and jets and whatnot of the car. But I did notice that the uh, little valve here inside this jet seemed to be sticking beforehand. Now it's um, nice and smooth when you press it down. So I'm hoping to get a little success out of there. Um, I've removed the old gasket from the bowl. I've also removed uh, this little piece here, this little rubber cover here. This is moving freely since I've got it. This was in the kit. I'm not gonna use a lot of parts out of the kit because I didn't do a full carburetor uh, tear down. So I'm just gonna replace what I've used. Um, here's the new gasket going back on the bowl here. Obviously that's a good one to put on so we don't have fuel leaks. So we'll go ahead and press that down in there. I'm sure that's gonna be fun to try to flip that upside down and it stay in place while we uh, put everything back together, but we'll get there. Uh, before we do that though, we need to put our float back in. Reinstall it. It only goes in one way, so you can't screw it up. I like it even better. <clears throat> Again, here's your float, along with your little needle shutoff valve there. You've got your pin here. This is gonna go in left to right or right to left. Shouldn't really matter. The important thing is making sure that you get it back centered up with the hole. I'm gonna take my pin left to right and put that back in there. Now, once it's in there, just check for operation. You're not binding. You're free to float, which is what the float does. Now, once you put your actual bowl uh, back on, 
it will kind of retain that pin just from the actual inner diameter there kind of retains that pin so we're going to do that now um, there again just double checking that gasket new gasket isn't going to break loose as we go to reinstall should be able to slip this down all right where it goes little tap there you've got a couple of raised castings there that help that seat and then we'll just go back in with our three screws All right, guys, so the carburetor bowl is on. I reoriented the uh, carburetor so I can put my solenoids back in. Brand new little guy here. Make sure you've got your O-ring on there. He goes right back in here. All right. Next up, solenoid here. And here's what I was talking about in regards to hating to replace it. Um, New one here, old one here. Uh, sure does look like it's relatively new. Nonetheless, uh, it's getting replaced. So we'll put that right back in there. It's got a, its own O-ring there. So no need to uh, locate and put a new one on there. It comes ready to go. Don't over torque these things. Um, I don't exactly have the book numbers on this, but we're going a little bit hand tight here. Maybe just another snug there. I've got my calibrated, uh, let's call it five foot pounds hand right here. It knows exactly what five foot pounds is. Joking, of course. All right, so from here, now that we've got the solenoids back on, we need to go and put our vacuum assemblies back on. Our little diaphragm actuated uh, vacuum uh, devices there. And then we'll be able to put our linkages back on. Okay, so our levers and links are back on there. Uh, I'm gonna tighten up this oddball 11 millimeter now. And I'll show you how to do that without really over. Um, extending the uh, lever arm there. Just kinda, just kinda hold between this. This is a fixed bracket and this bracket right here moves as you can see. Um, so just kinda hold it snug. While you go back on with this screw, or I'm sorry, this nut. I don't know if yours is gonna be a 10 or a 12. Mine is an 11. It doesn't seem like it's the original um, part. Uh, so I'm gonna take a whole lot just to snug it up. It shouldn't rattle loose. It's got a lock washer on it. So yeah, at this point, solenoids are in. Diaphragm assemblies are back, um, back on with their linkage arms there. Now everything is pretty much reverse installation with all the fuel hoses. We'll put the bottom cover back on, um, route all of our vacuum lines, our fuel lines, and I'm probably going to do that in time lapse. I know you guys are time's important, and I know you probably saying, Ron, you don't have to show me how to put this stuff back together, so let's get this done quickly. Like always, folks, uh, there was a lot of off-camera shenanigans to get all this stuff back in position. So take your time, reference your photos you took before you took all this off to get everything put back together right. Um, at this point, we're ready to go back on the truck. So let's head that way. All right, so we're back at the truck. I've got my uh, spacer on. Ensure to put that back on before you put the carb on. You'll have a very bad day. Um, I've kind of cleaned up all the coolant and gasoline that's... Um, grip down here as we were moving the carburetor so what I'm going to do now is kind of sit the carburetor down here loosely and start hooking up some of the uh, vacuum hoses I've re-referenced my pictures prior to to kind of know where these vacuum hoses go so I'm going to install them as I lower this carburetor back down into the um, location here um, making sure this guy here goes on the bottom based off the pictures Put him back there. That one there goes there, so that kind of gets our vacuum lines on that side complete. This side over here, you've got your two plugs and your vacuum line here. Um, those don't necessarily have to go uh, back in before we put the carburetor back down in there. So I'm gonna leave those loose. 
I am kind of getting my red vacuum line situated to go back towards um, the rear of the truck where it came off of. And you've also got to keep your engine harness kind of out of the way because it sits in this location of that lower box there. So at this point, we're gonna start lowering the sky back in here and see if we can get it situated. Things are going back together nicely at this point. Um, I've got my vacuum lines reinstalled here, coolant lines clamped back on. I readjusted my engine harness to its location where it belongs. I've hooked up both of the solenoids and the one vacuum line underneath it. Um, the remaining vacuum lines are gonna go on after we put the cover back on. You've got these three guys here. They'll go on once that top cover goes on at these locations here. One, two, three. So I'm going to work my way back now and start putting the intake track back on along with any of the uh, vacuum lines um, that were attached to it. I'll go back under, up underneath the truck and um, reattach the actual air box to put those three 10 millimeter bolts back to the underside of the truck, which will secure the air intake system. Then we'll come back over, hook up our throttle cable, put our box uh, back on top and um, try to fire this little unit up. Right, folks it's moment of truth the moment we've been all waiting for let's get to it oh, and she lives ah the big bad unit's up and running again folks we've pulled off yet another Houdini here at right hand drive Ron's garage guys that wraps it up for today's right hand driver on tutorial i hope this helps those looking to rebuild their carburetor or perhaps replace those solenoids in there that can be troublesome after the install the little truck fired right up first try no spitting no sputtering so i believe we've resolved the issue time will tell but i feel good about um, what we did to it today so had to lose a jdm suit it got a little warm in here today i'm still playing with blocks even though this is a tiny block we're having a good time with it so if you like what right hand drive ron's doing let me know Subscribe, check me out on Instagram, rhd underscore ron. Take care, guys.